What Crossings does for people who are not preachers is that it allows them to hear a good sermon even if one might not be preached. All of my imperfections being smart for generosity. It's become such a way of life for me. Crossings is not a sect of Christianity. Crossings is a tool that we use to understand Christianity. A way of understanding life. It's a lens. And it really is good, and it is something new. How many parts do you see here? Two, you say, wrong. There's the vertical part, the horizontal part, but the third part is where the two intersect, and that's different. And so what's going on here, in a sense, was for me what always crossings meant. Christian faith or the biblical scriptures, crossing over everything else in the world. Consider the Bible not a textbook of what you ought to do, what you ought to believe, how you ought to pray, how you ought to behave. But the Bible is a textbook analogous to the, the charts that hospitals keep on patients. Their illnesses and their therapies, their medications and their and that. And he says that's what scriptures is. It's a sort of a medical journal book that specks out people's problems, finally their God problem, and then proposes what the therapy, what the healing would be to heal that God problem. That double focus or those two questions became what you would ask every biblical text. Dear text, who's got the problem here and what is it? Dear text, have you got a solution to the problem? If so, what is it? That was what the Lutheran Reformation was, really. It wasn't new teaching, but it was an aha about what was already there in the biblical text that much of the medieval church had just sort of smothered or ignored or paid no attention to namely that, uh, that God loves sinners. And in Christ, he brings us all back home. I'll take a line from St. Paul, I think, uh, in, in Galatians, where, where many important things are, but his punchline is he's arguing with a whole congregation that got hooked back into do-gooderism after he had been there and, and given them the aha of the good news of a crucified and risen Messiah. Uh, and he said, you know, if, if do-gooderism is uh, the way you're going to go back to, then all that Jesus stuff was, was a, a waste of time that I preached you. But that's sort of his, you know, hitting it. But then he focuses and he said, the contrast is freedom. Freedom from all that do-gooder pressure or bondage. Paul says it's like imprisonment. It's where, or even he says it's a curse. It's worse than just uncomfortable. But then he says, you've got the freedom now to go back and do the best you can. And you don't have to worry about the consequences. But when I'm just a do-gooder, then I always got to worry, am I doing enough? Is, you know, have I made the mark? Have I got... And of course, the very fact that you raise the question is already a hint that you know, no. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm a goldie oldie. I'm not far away from the end of my survival. And I know everything historical finally passes away, even great good stuff. And uh, so with crossing some days, either transmogrifies into something that I would never recognize, or if it finally fades away, then I will cry if I'm still alive. But I'll say I, I know that nothing this side of heaven will last. Even good stuff, especially good stuff. This was at seminary, wasn't particularly uh, focused on a, a crossings context, uh, but we were, Bob and I were both often doing crossings subversively in seminary courses, you know. There had been at that time a uh, particular evangelism movement that came out of Florida uh, on how to make house calls as a as a, a witness from the congregation and call on a neighbor and knock on the door. And after a little gentle conversation or general conversation about, you know, how nice the place looks or the beautiful shrubs, you then push to say, if you were to die tonight and appear before the pearly gates and Jesus would ask you, why should I let you in? What would you say? 
And of course, most people often would say, well, I done good, or I did the best I could, or blah, blah, blah. In other words, the do-gooder voice would speak. And of course, that's the wrong answer. Uh, <laughs> why should I let you in? And this Japanese student said, you said you would. And that was the clincher. You said you would let me in. That was the voice of Jesus. Promise would be the technical term. And uh, that's the, my grounds for why I think you'd let me in. You said you would. And that's the gospel. <laughs>